What's up everybody, it has been a while since releasing the last video and in today's video we will show you how to recreate the wasted effect of GTA 5 when player dies. We will use Universal Rendering Pipeline Post Processing in addition to Dootween plugin for easy coding. This is Ramiz Altaba from Binary Lunar and let's get started. Before we start, we would like to show our appreciation to the generous supporters on Patreon who keep encouraging us to post quality content. And remember, by becoming a Patreon, you can download all our projects. Create a new Unity 3D project or start from the Universal Render Pipeline template and name the project GTA 5 Wasted Effect. Once the scene is ready, go to Window Package Manager and let's install the packages we need in this project. First of all, let's install the Universal RP. Then we will need to install the Cinema Machine because we will use uh, the virtual camera there to zoom in the character when the player dies. Also, we will use the Dootween package which will ease the coding for tweening or lerping between values that is necessary for lerping between, for example, the value of bloom and changing its intensity over time. Once you imported the dotween, don't forget to set up it so it works properly in your project. For the character, we will use the cyber character, which is free on Unity Asset Store. Also, we will use the low poly simple nature pack. I'll provide the links down in the description. Let's start from the demo scene of the low poly nature pack. And let's add also the cyber character, resize it. This character comes with many animations, so let's add the idle animation to it. Let's convert this character into ragdoll by right-clicking on the cyborg game object, then select 3D object, then ragdoll. After that, simply we drag the limbs to the slots in the ragdoll creator here. So we need to drag the pelvis, the left leg, left knee, left foot, and fill all the available slots accordingly. Then click Create to make this character a ragdoll. Sometimes this automated process doesn't give a desired results. For example, now the head collider is too big, so let's fix this by going to the head and reducing the size of the collider and placing it well. Now things seems fine and to test the ragdoll, we simply need to click play and disable the animator to see the results. Everything seems perfect now. That's nice. If you started using the universal render pipeline template, no need to do the following step. If you didn't do, just follow these steps. Right click, create, rendering, universal pipeline, universal render pipeline asset, then assign that from the project settings to both quality and the graphics as a default renderer. Then go to edit, render pipeline, universal render pipeline and upgrade the materials to the universal render pipeline. Now let's go to the camera, add volume script, then create a new profile and make sure to tick on the post processing on the camera. But before we continue, let's analyze the GTA 5 wasted effect so we know what post-processing components we need. In the first phase, we notice that there is bloom intensity starts high then decrease. Also, a color filter adds a yellowish gray to the scene. In addition to depth of field, which blurs the things far from the camera and the wasted sound effect. In phase two, we can notice a vignette which darkens the corners of the camera and the saturation of the colors has been removed so we can see the scene in black and white in addition to showing the wasted user interface representing 
something like a rectangle with wasted text in red and the camera zooms in or out. Now let's add the components to the volume. First we need a bloom to create that flash at the beginning of phase one. So enable threshold and intensity, set threshold to zero then disable it. Then set the intensity to two. We will control later by code the threshold between zero and one using the between. Then we need a color adjustment component that will serve two purposes. In phase one, we will use it to change the color filter by adding a yellowish grade to the scene. And also in phase two, we will use it by reducing the saturation value to minus 100, which gives the screen that black and white theme. Next, we will need a vignette component which will darken the edges of the camera. And we will control its intensity by code later, of course. And finally, we will need depth of field component to blur things far away from the camera. We also need an enemy to trigger the ragdoll and enable the wasted effect. So let's bring a rock prefab from the low poly environment. Make sure to trigger on the convex on the mesh collider and add a rigid body to it. Now check if the rock have physics and interacting with the environment. Everything is fine, seems. Also, let's create a new tag, name it enemy, and assign that tag to the rock because we will use on trigger enter to start the death effect and we check if we are hitting an enemy, we do all this process. Now we need to create the UI, so simply right click UI image, then center that by holding Alt and Shift and clicking center, then stretch it on the width, on the horizontal axis, I mean, to fill the width of the screen, then increase its height a bit, change the color to black and decrease the alpha to make it a bit transparent. Then we need to add the text, make it a child of the image. Uh, use the GTA font. I provided the link down in the description and type the wasted word. Make the color red and increase the size of the text to fill more of the image. Then click on the canvas and add canvas group component, which allow you to control the alpha of all the group. So we can fade in and fade out the wasted UI. And finally, before starting coding, let's create virtual camera by clicking on the cinema machine, then virtual camera. We, we are using the virtual camera because it allows easily to follow certain game object. So reposition the virtual camera the way you like, then specify which game object you wanna follow, whether it's the head of the player or preferably a body limp at the center of the character. Let's set the initial field of view to 60, then we will zoom in at the phase two of the wasted effect. To avoid wasting time, I'll share with you the script that I created to control all these effects. So we can focus on understanding what each line do. Let's start from top to down. First, we need to add some extra libraries or assemblies that allow us to access additional uh, codes or functions. We need to add dg.twinning to use the dotwin functions. We need to add the Unity engine rendering.universal to access the component of the post processing. We need the Unity engine.rendering to gain access to the volume profile. We also need the scene using Cinemachine to access the virtual camera. Let's create a public volume and public Cinemachine virtual camera, public canvas group, 
the volume to control the post-processing effects, the cinema machine virtual camera to control the virtual camera, and the canvas group to control the UI in the second phase. Let's set also two public colors. We will use them to tint the scene. We need also the four components of the post-processing we created, a color adjustment, binient, bloom, and depth of field. We also need an audio source to trigger the sound effect of wasted and also an access to the animator to disable it and trigger the ragdoll. In the start, we give references to the components we will use. We give a reference to the audio source, the animator, the color adjustments, the vignette, the bloom, and the depth of field. Of course, I did those checks to avoid getting errors in the Council. So in phase one, we reduce the time scale to 0.25 to give that slow motion effect. Then we disable the animator to activate the ragdoll, start the audio source to play the sound of wasted uh, sound effect from GTA. Also, as we agreed, we change uh, the start color filter to be yellowish one. We enable the threshold and do tweening or lerping between zero and one. And that will be in two seconds. And if you notice at the end of each line, we set the update to true to allow the time scale be independent from the slow motion. Next, we also control the depth of field, then the color filter, we do alert between the yellowish color to back to the normal white tone of the scene. And at the final line in phase one, we call on complete to trigger phase two. In phase two, we fade in the uh, UI by calling canvas group dot do fade to come to value one within one second. Then we do the tweens to show the effects of phase two. So we uh, reduce the saturation to minus 100 to give that black and white effect. We uh, increase the intensity of vignette to darken the corners and we do a zoom in for the camera. And of course, all of that is triggered when an enemy hits the collider of our player. So all of those starts by creating on trigger enter function and check if we are colliding with an enemy, then we print on the console, it's a hit. So we know we got a hit and call the phase one of this script. Let's see this in action. Add the script to the player then drag the main camera to the volume because it contains the volume profile. Then drag the virtual camera to the second slot. Then drag the canvas to give a reference to the canvas group. Choose the first color to be yellowish gray, And the color two should be pure white to go back to the original state after doing the blink in the phase one. Now for the moment of truth, let's test if everything working fine as expected. Hit play and let's try to make the rock hit the player and see if everything goes fine. Nope, seems we are forgetting something. Nothing got triggered nor the player turned into ragdoll. And it appears that due to the fact we didn't do a capsule collider or a collider around the player so it can detect the collision. So let's do that. Don't forget to check uh, is trigger on the capsule collider because it, it will trigger the wasted effect. Let's click play and try again this time. Hit the player with the rock and now the slow motion starts without post processing and we can see the animation is laggy. And that's because we did a slow motion and the physics updates in real time. To solve this problem, we need to go to each 
rigid body in the character and set the interpolation to interpolate. Also, it's more favorable to set the collision detection to continuous. Now let's hit play and try again. The character rigid body interpolating perfectly, but the rock is not because we forgot to set the interpolation for the rock to interpolate. Also, we can't see any post-processing yet because we have an error in the console saying that there is an audio source missing. Uh, so we need to add to the character an audio source to solve this issue. Don't forget to disable the play on awake and set the audio clip to the GTA wasted sound effects. Let's try playing one more time. And as we can see, everything seems fine in the scene view, but in the game view, we can't see post-processing yet. And that seems because I, for some reason, disabled the post-processing in camera and forgot to re-enable it. So let's go to the camera, enable the post-processing again, and everything should be perfect now. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon, Gustavo Augusto, Panda Owl, Brian Fonman, Zing Yang, Rami Hanano, Chenran Ning, Skyrolnik, Kaiju, Darius Katanitius, Jos Enrique, Mehmet Aydin, Sergei Markushin, Pira Chunbunchum, Kev Tesler, Fuar T.S. Shaharbar, Alexis Beeks, Dimitri Pasiliv, Bredman Joshua, Kratushville, Parker Nelson, Giacomo Mariani, Jacqueline Fever, Pedro, Lance Valentine, and Jack Crystal. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Till next time, see you soon.